Well, the problem with low inflation means that maybe the Fed hiked rates too fast, and that which is holding down inflation. And the, the problem with that is th that means that the Fed has room potentially with, with interest rates so low that maybe they need to make a cut. And that's what the market is pricing in, is that, that an interest rate cut is coming. But why on its face, Tom, would, would low inflation be a bad thing? In other words, maybe, maybe Lindsay's right and they think that, well, maybe we slowed the economy too much by raising interest rates. We, we, we dampened inflation too much. Why yeah. is low, low inflation a, not a good thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think most people think of low inflation as this dynamic where, uh, you know, uh, a.k.a. Japan. Uh, where there's just a lack of aggregate demand. Um, and, and I think that's, that's why it gets this, is, is this dirty word. But, but I think there's another way of, that we really need to think about this. Um, and, and, this and this goes to the heart of why the Phillips curve uh, it actually really doesn't work at all. Uh, and, and that is it, the, one of the key reasons why we have such low inflation is actually mostly because we import boatloads of disinflation. Right? So think about the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve is literally trying to tell you uh, based on a singular domestic variable, the unemployment rate, why inflation is doing what it's doing. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Right over the last 20, 30 years, we've become a much more open economy today um, uh, than at any other time in our history. And so as a result, um, it's really hard for us to generate underlying inflation. And that has been a problem for the United States for, for, for multiple decades now at this point. So you don't think that this notion of uh, inflation being transient. I mean, do you think that low inflation may yeah. be here to stay? And how does that fit in with how the Fed should approach rate cuts potentially? Yeah. So one of the things that uh, we, we completely agree with Powell on is if you look at where inflation, uh, what it's, uh, headline inflation has done, let's be clear on this, not core inflation, because underlying inflation, i.e. core, really hasn't done much. Um, it, it's been pretty relatively stable. But headline inflation has uh, obviously slowed. And one of the key things, if you look at, we like to look at it uh, in terms of the volatile components uh, of inflation. And the very volatile components of inflation have done nothing but fall. Um, so Powell is right. I mean, really, what's happening recently there really is some transitory factors that will wind up shaking out. Steve, pick up on uh, the thoughts that Lindsay and, uh, and Tom just mentioned there, but also let's come back to that, uh, to, the, to the words that you found so uh, sort of portentous, and that is patient for some time. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to answer your first question. You know, why is low inflation bad? Very quickly, Tyler. Uh, the Fed is a 2% target because it doesn't want to be at zero. It doesn't want to be at zero because it can't do that much at zero. <laughs> and one is too close to zero for comfort, so that's why it picks two, and that's why something below two makes the Fed uncomfortable because it doesn't want to be at zero. It's really that simple. There's no scientist, science or, or research behind two Because being the deflation, optimal. because right. when you get close to zero. It doesn't want to zero, fight deflation. Right, exactly. Deflation is exactly. sort of uncharted territory, to use the cliche. It right. may be harder to get out of, see Japan, exactly. comma. Exactly. Uh, and right. And, th and third, it right. means contraction, really. So, so, Tyler, just real quickly on the way I look at these minutes here, I think they're asking the market for like six months of time here. And if I use the, the, the phrase coming quarters to mean two quarters or three quarters, somewhere in that zone there, the Fed is looking for inflation to pick back up in that time period. So they expect to be patient for some time, and they add here that they're going to be patient even if the global economy were to improve and financial conditions were to improve, mm -hmm. they're not going to hike in that context. Lynn, now, whether oh, or not ahead, they, I'm sorry. Whether or not they cut, it seems like, and I want to know what Tom and Lindsay think about this, inflation has a short leash here. It has to perform better to the upside or it will warrant some response if my read is correct. And I want to go back to the words that they said there, uh, which is that... Um, uh, S several said that uh, if, if, if it doesn't improve, um, I'm trying to find this, uh, this language here that I had, um, a risk of inflation is becoming unanchored below 2%. I think that's going to warrant a response from the Fed. And inflation has a short leash here of a couple quarters where if it doesn't come back, the Fed's going to have to revisit policy.